Today in our 2009 Honda Fit, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Blue Box base plate kit with your removable arms, part number BX2253. So here's what our base plate's going to look like once we have it installed. And this is going to allow us to hook our tow bar directly up and safely tow our Fit down the road. And the fact that it has removable arms means it's going to blend in really nicely, but when we need to tow, we can simply put them in, push it in until that ring pops out, rotate them, and it'll lock into place. And it's going to work the same on both sides. Right on the inside of our arms, we're going to have a spot to connect our safety cables, and we'll have plenty of room and not have to worry about interfering with the grill or the arms. They even have a spot here in the middle where we can mount our electrical accessories. Just keep in mind that the wiring is going to be sold separately. Our Blue Ox base plate is going to work with a wide variety of Blue Ox tow bars as well as some Roadmaster tow bars with an adapter that is sold separately. As far as the installation goes, it is going to be rather straightforward. There's going to be some minor drilling and trimming of the lower grill here. But now that we've gone over some of the features and seen the end result, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to open up our hood and right by the front grill here, we're going to have a total of eight fasteners that we're going to have to pull out. So you're going to grab a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver. You're going to come underneath the center section of that push pin, pop that up, which will release it. Then we can come underneath the bottom of it and pull the rest of the push pin out. And we'll repeat that for the remaining push pins. If we move to the wheel well, right where our fender is going to meet our fascia, and we look directly up, there's going to be a Phillips head screw that's holding it in place. So you're going to want to grab a Phillips screwdriver and we're going to pull that fastener out. There's going to be one on each side, so we'll pull the other one out as well. Now if we move back to the bottom of the wheel well here in the corner, we're going to have a push pin and we'll have one on each side as well as three in the center section. We're going to want to pull all those out, and those are going to come out the same way the ones on the top did. We've got a flathead screwdriver, and we're going to work that center section loose until we can get the rest of the push pin out. So now if we come just forward of those push pins that we removed, we're going to have two Phillips screws on each side that we're going to have to pull out. So now if we start where our fender meets our fascia, we're going to start gently pulling the fascia away until it unlocks those tabs. But once we get to the headlight area here, we're going to have a few of these tabs that we're going to have to get a screwdriver and gently lift up on those to unlock the fascia. So you want to pull it away a little bit so we can get room. Then we're going to take a screwdriver, lift up on that tab so the fascia is free, and we're going to work our way towards the center doing one at a time. We'll do this for both sides. Just be careful once you release that last tab there so you don't have your fascia fall on the ground. So once you have all the tabs loose, we can grab our fascia. And it's probably best to grab it in the center area so we can get a good hold of it. And we're going to slowly pull it away. But if your fit has fog lights, we're going to have to disconnect those before we can pull it all the way. So at the back of the fog light here, we're going to have this little tab. I'm going to push in. And that should release the light. We'll unplug it. We're going to let the cord hang right now. And we'll unplug the other one. Here's the tab. It's going to push down on that and pull. And we'll release the socket. And we'll set our fascia aside where it won't get damaged. With the fascia out of the way, we can bring our attention to our bumper beam here. And we're going to have a total of four bolts holding it in place. So we're going to want to grab a 12 millimeter socket and pull each one of those out on both sides. 
Now the bolt on the inside, we are going to have a limited space just because the bumper beam is right here. So you may want to use a hand ratchet to break it loose and take those final ones out. And when you go to take the last one out, you want to make sure you have a firm grip on it because there's not going to be a whole lot holding this in place. And we'll take our bumper beam, we're going to lift up and pull out and we can set it aside. Now on each side where our bumper beam mounted, we're going to have this plastic piece alongside of the radiator. We're going to want to trim this so that it's pretty close to even with the bottom of the flange where our bumper beam was mounted. Now you can either use a utility knife or anything you have because it is plastic, but I'm going to be using a rotary tool. You just want to be extra careful because it is extremely close to the AC condenser here. Once we have that cut, if we move to the inside, there's going to be a plastic pushpin fastener. We'll remove the plastic pushpin fastener so that we can pull the section that we cut out fully off the front of the vehicle. And we're going to go and repeat that for the other side as well. Now on the side of the frame here, we're going to have two pre-existing holes. We're going to want to use the top one, and we're going to be enlarging that to a 3 8 of an inch. So we can grab our drill bit, and we're going to drill directly into the frame. And once you have that drilled out, it's not a bad idea to grab one of the bolts and ensure that you can slide it in and out without it catching. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other side as well. Now it's never a good idea to leave exposed metal on the frame of your car. So I'm gonna take a little bit of spray paint. I'm gonna spray out where I drilled on both holes. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna put our base plate into position. And we wanna line up the top hole or base plate with the hole that we just drilled out. We're going to take a 3 8 bolt and we're going to temporarily secure it. And then on the inside, we'll put a 3 8 lock nut. And we want to get these on there pretty snug for right now and then we can come back and make sure that the base plate is nice and level and we're going to fully tighten those up. So we want to make sure that the base plate is going to be level going front to back because we don't want it tilted too far up or tilted too far down. So now that our base plate is nice and level, I'm going to come back with a 9 16th socket and wrench and I'm going to tighten up my hardware on both sides. With our base plate securely in place, we're going to use it as a template to drill out the remaining two holes. So again, we're going to be using that 3 8 drill bit and going straight through the hole in our base plate and drilling into the frame. repeat that for all the remaining holes in our base plate. So now that all the holes are drilled out, we're going to take another one of our short bolts, but this time we're going to put a little bit of red Loctite on the threads. We're going to go through the second hole to where it's going to come to the inside of the frame and secure it down with another lock nut. For the bottom hole, we're going to take one of our longer bolts. It's going to have a small shoulder on it. Again, apply a little bit of Loctite to the threads. We'll go through the bottom hole and secure it with another lock nut. Now, the easiest way to get these lock nuts in place is if you actually reach underneath and behind the base plate, you'll have just enough room to reach your hand in there and get that nut started. With those two in place, we're going to want to remove the top bolt so we can apply some red Loctite to it. But since all the holes are drilled, we'll just have to tilt the base plate back into position. And we'll 
re-secure it with that lock nut. Now we're gonna repeat that same process and the same combination of hardware on the other side. Now we'll come back with that same 9 16th wrench and socket and we're gonna snug up all of our hardware. Now I'm gonna come back with a torque wrench and I'm gonna to torque all my hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. We took our permanent safety cables, we wrapped it around the frame, brought it back, and we attached both ends to this quick link here and the spot on our base plate. Once you have them tight on both sides, you wanna come back with a 5 8 wrench and put it on the quick link and make sure it's fully tightened. So we can reinstall our bumper beam. And when we put this in place, there's these little tabs that are gonna line up. You kinda wanna go above the hole and then slide it down to where those tabs will somewhat hold it in place. Grab one of the bolts. We're gonna get one of them at least started by hand on each side so we don't have to worry about it falling off. And we'll come back and we'll tighten up all of our bolts. Now on each one of our fog lights, I went ahead and marked out this yellow line going around. This black housing here is going to be trimmed because it's going to interfere with our base plate. Now we don't want to take all of this off and we don't want to cut past just the black plastic into the light itself. But we're going to trim down about above where the mounting screw is around and take this entire piece off. Now the easiest way to cut it is gonna be with a rotary tool. That way we can make nice clean cuts, but just make sure you take your time and don't go too deep. So you have the outline cut out. We can see if we went deep enough. So again, you just want to make sure you leave this part of the light intact and just take out that plastic shroud. So we'll go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Now one other thing we need to trim on our fascia is going to be the grill section here. If we come to that center cross beam, we're going to want to cut that out so we have this big opening on either side. That way it'll make it easier for our arms to come through on our base plate. So with our base plate secure, before we put our fascia back on, it's always a good idea to go ahead and route any kind of other accessories like wiring or any kind of braking systems because it would be a lot easier with the fascia off. Now with an extra set of hands, we're going to get our fascia back in place and don't forget to plug the fog lights back in. We can line everything up and may have to move this upper grill section. help guide it in place. Once those four clips under the headlight are in place, we can come over to the edge. We're gonna make sure that the fascia goes back in to the right spot so it lines up with our fender. Now we can put all the fasteners back in that we removed earlier. You're gonna to wanna to push the outer section of the push pin in first and then lock it down by pushing in the center section. That'll finish up your look at the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms, part number BX2253 on our 2009 Honda Fit.